Hello guys, this is Like, and this is a series where I will try to write an application that will replace and improve on the functionality of the YouTube sub box. Last time we finally started writing some code and tests and uh, talked a little bit about testing and stuff. Today, which is the same day, it's literally one minute later, we will continue. Normally I wouldn't do this, but because we did have like two weeks of a break, I think. It's it's a big enough break to make an exception and do two videos in a row, uh, which will still be released with at least some one-day gap between them anyway. But uh, it's good to have some extra videos, and I'm actually getting excited about this. Previously, I was really averse to the idea of making these videos. Now I'm all like, I gotta make more. So let's get it started. The timer is beginning. So this test, I believe, fails to pass. We have the ignore test, which is currently on hold while we finish testing the YouTube channel itself. Uh, this test tests that specifically if we have uh, null channel ID, we get message containing channel name. And in this case, again, I will go against pure TDD and just write another test and it'll still fail because it's the same test. It won't even register. Uh, right, so if it is blank, we throw new illegal argument exception, cannot be blank, channel name. And now it passes both of these conditions rather than worrying about one or the other. Let's do another test where we check for no blank uh, ID. And this will be basically copy-paste of this, but we will flip the inputs. And instead of expecting the message to contain channel name, we'll expect channel ID. This will once again fail horribly, and uh, we can do a bit of a copy-paste to make sure it passes. You probably can see a pattern appearing before us. But before we deal with that pattern, let's deal with this uh, code, which similarly to these tests, we we pretty much have the following situation, except it's called a little bit differently. And in this case, we will say assert invalid channel. And instead of doing search, we will do a new YouTube channel and error type will be still the same and this will just be two strings and one of them will be called channel name and the other one will be called channel id now this is very very similar to this so you could try and force some more refactoring in here but i don't think it makes a lot of sense like, what would you do is basically refactor this out instead of having parameters. But at that point, you're not really doing enough to be worth refactoring. Sometimes you will want to switch up the argument exception. Sometimes you might want to switch up the message. It's not worth refactoring in this case because these things right now seem really simple, but they can easily change. So, let's not do that. In this case, we will be using this. We will be using the inputs here. And uh, the only difference here is this. And this should still pass. All right. And then we will do the same here. But use these inputs, these inputs, and these inputs. And something went wrong, as it can do sometimes. Okay, so these kind of things, I think it's not worth trying to refactor because the API is already doing all you can really expect out of it. Uh, maybe if you would have like a hundred classes that will do exactly the same check with exactly the same message type, we can then start looking into maybe a general assertion which just takes something to call and uh, a string, 
which we may do later. But right now I see no point. It's it's too early. What I do see a point to do is take care of this crap, because as you can see right now, it's just getting out of hand. We have like it's blank, is blank, is blank, is blank, is blank, is blank, blank everywhere. Every old place that wants to do it. One usually simple way to solve this kind of thing is to have a utility that will take care of this for you. So let's create our first utility class and call it require. That's usually the general naming. And I created a class, but I have a special creation called, uh, or don't have it anymore. I guess I didn't create it. I suck. Let me, let me create a kind quickly. Here's a simple, quick and dirty static class template. How do we, how does it look in practice? So if we create a new static class called, uh, what was it called? Choir. It fucking sucks completely because I fucked up. Uh, oh dear God, I was supposed to add this. There we go. Yeah, okay. Let's try that again. <laughs> well, what a disaster. Okay, new static class called require. Third time's the charm. There we go. So this is the so-called static class. It won't have anything that isn't static in it that you can use. And to enforce that, we will create a private constructor. It already is final, but we also have private constructor, so you can't instantiate it. Even if you use reflection, it will still throw an assertion error if you try to instantiate it. This is complete overkill, but because you can just do it by generating the right type of a class, why not do it? It doesn't cost you anything this way, and it's really quick and simple. That's really the only reason I do this. <laughs> anyway, it's also not that important, because it's obvious if your old CUC is static, it's static, so we'll put it at the bottom somewhere and not pay too much attention to it. So what do we do with this? We want to do public static. Uh, for now, let's do void uh, and say not blank uh, and say string, string s. What is this not blank all about? So when we pass in the string into not blank, we expect that this string will be checked for blankness and will throw an exception if that's what happens. Yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, write a test for it. Well, you thought we're not going to write a test for something as important as something that we use across our entire application? <sighs> Please! In this case, I don't think we're going to forget about YouTube channel, so I don't see a need to disable anything. In this case, I will just use the method name as the test name, because all we're going to do here is input a bunch of strings into it and see what happens. Once again, we have the usual assert that exception of type illegal argument exception class is thrown by require not blank uh, in a lambda, preferably. What the hell? And we pass a null. We can actually do that pretty easily. Nothing happens right now. Once again, as I know that we're going to do the same thing with uh, a blank thing, and we know that a blank will solve the problems, we can just do that, and then do if string utils is blank s, we throw new illegal argument exception. For now, we're not going to put anything in there. And now everything passes. But now, here's an interesting idea. We want this to give us some kind of error, but the best we can do right now is cannot be blank string. Uh, we can change this obviously to be something else like uh, a string cannot be blank, put a dot on it. All of this will still pass test. None of this matters. We just kind of want to see it. Even better would be invalid string cannot be blank. The reason I like this is because string is then lowercase, and that's easier to work with, as far as I'm concerned. All right, well, so in these cases, we could say, okay, it contains uh, with message containing string, right? Make makes sense. And uh, perhaps also, we can perhaps do multiple such contain. There's uh, blank. 
to make sure that the error is very clear, that it's not just that it's a string, but also that it's blank, that is the problem. We did a little bit of backwards TDD there. <laughs> uh, we, we messed around with the message before I wrote the test for it, but that's because I wasn't sure what I wanted to go for, so it, it's fine. But this won't work for our current tests, because our current tests, as you can see, depend on error type, and error type is just, it's not gonna figure in here. So we need a way to put in the error type here. So the best way for me to do something like that would be to do something like this, right? So you do not blank, string s, string, let's say call it title, right? So that would be the simplest solution to such a conundrum is you just uh, add another argument and call it a day. But I feel like this is a little bit problematic. <laughs> problematic indeed, because as you can see, both of the arguments are strings, which can get a little bit confusing and make you make a mistake. Instead of doing this, why don't we have a special object that we will uh, use uh, to denote a name of a particular input? Then, since they won't be the same type, it will be string and something else. And let's call this, let's say, why not do it public interface name and uh, just say string get title and just say name, or well, since we're using title, we might as well use title here. And now, uh, even though we have two inputs, they're different type, and we're never gonna mix them up, and therefore we can do something like this. Uh, why, why don't we write some tests for it? Right, why don't we write some tests for it, all right? Public void not blank name. No, sorry, it's titled. All right? So this will be the same kind of tests, but instead of just being this, we will do something like this and call it, uh, let's say just call it input. And then we expect to see input as well we expect to see input here obviously none of that happens but now we can do if string utils and then say here instead of doing this we can do title get title excellent as you can see now it requires uh, can provide an optional name if they want to. Uh, let's actually make this more user friendly. Instead of requiring that uh, we always provide a lambda, which can be a little bit confusing here, right? Like, what is the lambda here? Let's create a static method to help with this. So, static. Uh, title, titled, string title, and for now we return no. All right, so what does this achieve for us? Uh, it means that we can use this method instead, but for that we need to write some tests first. So the idea is obviously, for title we want to do basically, we do require titled input, title and then we want assert that title get title is equal to input now to make sure that this works properly as you can see now we'll get null pointers we should instead do this extract require title get title right and this way if this is null, we can do an assertion is not null. Makes the assertion much clearer as to what we're expecting. And in this case, we still just do the lambda. We don't actually want a special object at all here. 
Excellent, isn't it? Right, so now, instead of passing in these weird lambda exceptions, we can do... Uh... Well... Yeah. To make sure that these don't clash with all the test title. And now there we go, instead of passing... Seeing except sorry lambdas we're passing in actual objects that we can understand. So you require that this input titled input is not blank. There's another thing that I want them to do and say what if we pass a actual value so let's say any I want it to return this value. If we do this, then we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, having to write it in a separate line. So for, well, l let me display this. So for now, let's just actually do that. And we return S, which we return S and do the same here. If we call it titled input. Uh, this also returns void at the moment and we return s. There you go, everything works just fine. So we have uh, skipped a few things in our rush, which it's important if you do this to always look back and see, uh, maybe we missed something. What about blank titles? Right, we, see, we do public void uh, blank title. And we do all of this, but we pass in no. Do we want the title to just be no? I don't think so. I think that that should be prohibited. 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 So instead, we want also assert that exception of type illegal argument exception class is thrown by titled no message containing title so and blank and the same thing here with a straight up blank thing we don't we don't want this inspection it will be all over the place but we don't only, we only don't want it on tests so if we skip some results and tests, that's no big deal whatsoever. So stop whining. Okay, these tests are getting really out of hand. Uh, obviously right now it's not doing that because it's not doing any checks whatsoever. But as you can see, we can actually perform this require check inside the require by passing title and titled title here's the problem with this this will forever recurse i believe we'll get an overflow yes and the answer to that is obviously we just we don't need to call itself we just pass in a lambda in this one specific situation and that solves our recursion problem this is the only place, hopefully, yeah, literally the only place where we will use a lambda instead of using the method. Because what are you going to do? One way you could resolve this is if you would uh, extract this to a private method. But, I mean, I, I don't see the point. I think it's pretty clear what's going on here. Anyway, this has become quite the mess. Let's start by refactoring this. One thing to notice is that these are basically the same, except this just uses a very specific title. And we do know that we probably almost always will use the title, so I don't think it's a particularly inefficient solution to just do this and call it titled string. It's the same thing, but it's slightly less efficient because it has to create a, this, you know, perform checks, it has to do all this other stuff. In fact, now that we've done this, uh, there is a little bit of sense in having a private method here because we know that this isn't blank. 
because it's cold inside this particular application. So what's the point of checking it for blankness? That seems a little bit doffed, if nothing else. So let's create a method called not blank title and replace all the occurrences. And this will be a private method. We'll put it here under the private level. And we only use it internally here. And it all it does is avoids this special check for blankness in cases where we know that this is necessary. The other way to avoid this is obviously to just always use lambda, but I feel like that would be a little bit much. No, actually, I think that's nicer. I changed my mind. After looking at it for a little bit, it's just plain obvious that that's the case. But here we have a bit of an issue because if we do it like that and allow this title, well, no one, no one's safe, for example, from passing in the title, not through the titled API, but using an empty string through a lambda. I don't think we can just make this private, right? Because if we do that, yeah, well, this, this no longer works. But actually, everything else works. So maybe, maybe that is the answer. Let's just ignore this test for now. <laughs> Hard ignore. Oh, actually, everything works. So, okay. So the title is actually going to be a private interface, meaning that no one else can make titles except through this method. And that solves our issue. I like that. I think that's really nice. It does. Yeah, we can put it even at the bottom here. Well, no, I think it makes sense to keep it at the top because it's it's good to know what this is. Uh, we will need to add some more documentation probably, and we need to fix this test, which, by the way, the limit of our time is approaching. So one thing to do is obviously assert that the object we return with this method is not null. So uh, assert that is not known. Really, the actual solution is to make this protected rather than private. There. This way, the tests can access it no problem, but anyone else would have to put it into a you good like util package. And uh, ain't nobody gonna do that. Nobody's gonna put their class in this package just to abuse my API. And if they go out of the way to do that much, I think it's fair to say that they've fucked up. So there you go. That took a little bit of doing, but it seems it all compiles and works. And uh, in the next episode, we're going to clean up all these tests and maybe get back into the channel and other stuff. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.